it's amazing to me how popular things get and how fast they get popular now with social media and everything. Um, I'm sitting here holding a VM Pulse swim jig, and I can remember just, you know, eight or nine, ten years ago, swimming a jig was kind of a, kind of a, not necessarily a new deal, but something that wasn't really extremely popular, but just in a few areas of the country. And now it seems like everywhere you go, guys talk about using it, and it's really effective. Um, and that's why it's gained so much popularity, but there are some different tricks and, and things you can do to it to make it more useful in different situations. I'm gonna go through a few very basic swim jig things that I do to my swim jig. Um, this is a VM Pulse swim jig, and really, it's really all I do is grab the package. Because I'm not normally gonna flip this in a real heavy cover or something, I'll oftentimes take, or almost always, and trim a little bit of the weed guard off. I like to cut it at an angle that's just elevated above the the hook itself. Take some of that off. It just it makes it easier to hook those fish on a long cast. And honestly, that's really about all I ever do to it. Occasionally, if I'm fishing in real, real clear water, I will cut some of the skirt out. And if I'm, if I'm gonna cut some of the skirt out, I always cut it out on the underneath side. And it's a pretty simple process. I just fold the skirt forward. A lot of guys do this and um, you can thin your skirt out a little bit. You don't want to pull it out. You want to leave, you know, a three eighths to a half inch there so that it kind of stays locked into the band. Um, that'll just thin the skirt up so it makes a more transparent profile as you're running it through the water. Um, to me, you know, your fish can see a swim jig much more visually than, than a flipping jig or a football head jig. And I think that's why sometimes trimming the skirt matters. And the reason for that is they're able to look through that bait. It's not up against the bottom. You gotta realize that when a fish swims up to a football head jig or a flipping jig per se, most of the time that bait's laying on the bottom and the bait is contrasted against this. Well, this might be contrasted just through clear water. So sometimes having a thinner skirt makes the bait more transparent. Um, the, the fuller solid skirt makes the bait more visible. That's very important to keep in mind when you're looking at water clarity. If I'm fishing real clean water, I'll oftentimes thin the skirt out. If I'm fishing dingier water, I'm going to almost always leave the skirt full. The next thing is really just your, your trailer options. And I think people overlook the, the trailers more on a swim jig than anything else. And to me, that's one of the most popular things. Um, I mean, one of the most important aspects of a swim jig. I typically use um, one of two trailers. I either use my Wild Crawl, either the Junior or the, or the Standard, or a V&M Thundershed. Now, you can see on this Thundershed, I've actually... This is a full-size thunder shad that I have basically just cut the nose off of to just shorten it just a tad. And all I'm going to do is just is just thread them on, thread them on the jig. <clears throat> Nothing tricky. Um, the jig's got a nice little chunk keeper built onto it. I just push it right up on that, and we're pretty much good to go. Just make sure all your skirt pulls back around. And then the same thing with the wild crawl. I'm just going to thread it up on the on the shank of the hook and on the <clears throat> On the, on the chunk keeper. Now here's the main deal. <clears throat> to me, the trailer on this swim jig is all about speed. So what you've got to keep in mind is this trailer, because of it being having two feet on it versus this trailer having one foot versus this trailer in a larger size versus a junior, is you're going to get more resistance. If you think about this in terms of like a spinnerbait blade, this would be more like a willow leaf spinnerbait blade. This would be more like an Indiana spinnerbait blade. And then a bigger full size crawl, wild crawl, would be more like a Colorado blade per se. You get more lift, you get more feel, you get more vibration. So in dirtier water, I'm gonna normally use a bigger bulkier trailer because it allows me to get more vibration, help the fish find the bait, and also it allows me to fish the bait slower because typically I'm throwing this bait shallow. And I want to be able to cast it a long ways. A lot of people say, well, why would you, why don't you just use a lighter head? I'd rather use the three eighths with a bigger trailer than say a quarter ounce with a smaller trailer with the ability to fish it slow in shallow water. And the reason why is in that shallow water, I want a bait that offers me the ability to make long casts. I do use a quarter ounce at times when I want a small profile and I'm fishing it shallow, but I want to be able to throw the bait as far as I possibly can. So when you're, when you're trying to select a trailer for your swim jig, you know, think about the conditions that you have and 
pick a trailer that allows the jig to perform the best under those under those circumstances. And I think it'll it'll make you a better swim jig fisherman. I know it has me. It's enabled me to use a technique that's that's very very effective in a lot of water that maybe five or seven years ago I would never have even thought to swim a jig in. Um, swim jigs are just great all around baits. They're they're really good at mimicking pretty much everything a bass eats. You can they can look like a bluegill. They can look like a shad. They can even look like a crawl. Um, this is the vegan impulse. It's a swim jig that I designed. It's got my custom 30 degree flat eye hook in it. Um, it's got you know a, a, a adequate weed guard for a swimming jig application. Um, it's got the 3D eyes. It's got a good a good skirt keeper and a good chunk keeper. It's just a good version of a swim jig, which there are many 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 of on the market. So hopefully there's a few little tricks that will help you become a better swim jig fisherman. And really not necessarily become a better swim jig fisherman, but give you the ability to use a swim jig in a situation where you typically would not have in the past.